Welcome back to AM Agenda. With me now, our panel, the Shadow Parliamentary Secretary for Disabilities, Senator Mitch Fifield, and the Parliamentary Secretary for Health, Mark Butler. Gentlemen, good morning to you both, and, and good to see you both. Good morning, Kieran. Good morning, Kieran. Our first show for the election year. It's going to be a, a big one. Um, the, one of the, the first election commitments has been the commitment by the Prime Minister yesterday, Mitch, to expand the My School website. It's been controversial. The teachers' union don't, doesn't like it, but it seems parents do. Is the opposition wrong? to be critical of it? Well, look, we're being critical on, on two fronts. Uh, firstly, the, the government bungled uh, the implementation of the site on day one, and also we think they've only done half the job. Obviously, the more information parents have, the better. Uh, that empowers parents to make choices uh, for their children, uh, to choose the right school for them, and if there's a problem at a school, uh, to allow the parents to go in to talk about it to see if uh, the situation can be resolved. But we think the government's only done half the job. It's terrific to give parents the information, but you've also got to empower schools to fix problems. Uh, you've got to give principals greater autonomy. You've got to give principals the ability to move resources. Uh, so you like the, the idea, but you, you like the idea of par parents getting the information because at, at the moment it's, the, the message seems a bit mixed. Well, sure, absolutely. I mean, th this website is is the natural outworking of what we started to do when we were in government, when we started to talk about national tests so that you can compare uh, schools so that uh, schools and parents can be given the information to, to try and lift performance where assistance is needed. So uh, the website's the natural outworking of, of what we were talking about when we were in government. And I, I might add that uh, the Labor Party were always pleased at that time when we were talking about these sorts of tests. So the tests are a good thing, uh, the information for parents is a good thing, but You've got to give uh, schools the independence, the autonomy uh, to hire and fire staff and to uh, have greater control over their budgets. Mark Butler, the, the government is, has promised to expand the website. The Parents and Citizens Association in, in New South Wales says the idea that the Prime Minister put forward yesterday, surveys of parents would be too inconsistent, too varied. Is that a realistic thing to look at, the surveys on <coughs> bullying and so on? Well, uh, I think the first thing to say is that the website's been an amazing success. Nine million hits on its first day and many, many millions more since then. The feedback I've been getting is that it really has started a national discussion about our schools, which was really the ambition that Julia Gillard had in the website, among other things. So it's been a fantastic success, but the Prime Minister indicated yesterday it's only, it's only part of the job and we want to build uh, on the information contained in the schools website and give parents a rounder view about the sort of the overall culture of a school as well as the academic achievements at those schools so uh, there'll be more work on that I'm sure between now and the election but I think the Prime Minister's put out there and, and, and Julie Gillard's repeated this morning a commitment to build on those academic results and give parents a much fuller view about the feel and the culture of the school the sort of extracurricular work that they do how the school deals with things like bullying uh, the sort of charitable work that they do in the way in which schools link to their communities. These are the sorts of things that parents want to know as they decide where to send their kids. What about giving the principals more independence, autonomy, the power to deal with some of the issues that they face, as, as Mitch is suggesting here? Well, currently we deal with a range of different sectors in the school system. We've got Catholic schools, independent schools and state school systems run essentially by state governments. Now, we're doing what we can as a national government to try and give parents more information and more power over the decisions they make in relation to their child's education. We're also doing things like putting $2 billion into extra literacy and numeracy and other programs to help disadvantage advantage schools lift their standards. So we're doing all that we can. We're going to continue to do that work. It's going to take a bit of a while, uh, but there'll be a great discussion over the course of this year leading into the election because of what Julia Gillard did last week on the website and because of the uh, challenge that the Prime Minister put out there yesterday. Well, uh, we're back to, to Parliament tomorrow, of course. Mitch, your leader uh, faces his first parliamentary test at the, uh, the, at the dispatch box He's a fairly sort of combative leader. We've already seen that in terms of his policy approach. Uh, what can we expect in the Parliament? A bit more of a, uh, of a combative habit, do you think? Well, I, I think Kevin Rudd is going to know that uh, there's an opposition. Uh, Tony Abbott uh, isn't backward in, uh, in tackling his opponents. Uh, he's not backward in tackling the policy issues. So uh, Kevin Rudd is going to find himself under greater scrutiny, I think, than he's had at any time during his prime ministership. And it's also, um, I think, the public is going to be focusing much more on federal politics than they have over the last couple of years. <coughs> uh, the voters do tend to take uh, more of an interest uh, in the policy debates. So uh, uh, Tony Abbott will certainly be asking Kevin Rudd to outline 
outline the real effects of his uh, ETS, which is something Kevin Rudd hasn't done, and also um, how he's going to repay the massive amount of debt that we have. Well, the Prime Minister's really trying to pin Tony Abbott as being erratic. Uh, yesterday, Mr Rudd was discussing the imminent uh, release of the alternative climate change policy. He was on the Nine Network. Let's recap a little bit of what Mr Rudd had to say on Channel Nine. Depends on what day of the week it is for Tony. I mean, he supported our scheme, he opposed it, he supported it, said we should amend it, and then in his defining position of political principle, said to Mr Turnbull, oh, look, uh, Malcolm, you know on these questions of climate change and the emissions trading scheme, I'm just a weather vane. Well, we stand for something here. It is a basic question of policy. We will be committed to it, we will pursue it, we will implement it. It's, it's interesting, Mark, uh, and Penny Wong this morning on our program, criticising this policy, it hasn't even been released yet. You are trying to pin him as being erratic and all over the shop. It's a fairly transparent uh, approach. Well, it's the obvious response. I mean, people want a clear debate about climate change, but Tony Abbott's had more positions on climate change than you'll find in the Kama Sutra, the most notable of which was that he said that climate change, in his words, were, quote, absolute crap, end quote. We also know that the real power in the Liberal Party now, Nick Minchin, thinks it's all a left-wing conspiracy, so who knows what we're going to end up with from the Liberal Party tomorrow. But what we do know, all of us having been back in our electorates over the course of the summer, is that Australians want a meaningful for response to climate change. And that's what we're committed to doing. Penny Wong's talking to the Greens today. We'll talk to anyone here in the Parliament uh, who is, who is dinky, dinky die about coming up with a real solution to climate change. Mitch Fifield, how important is it for Tony Abbott to be credible economically with this policy tomorrow? The Prime Minister says it's going to be a mega uh, new tax. Um, how important is it for, for Abbott to, to have the, uh, you know, the economic foundation for this policy? This policy will have an economic foundation. I mean, it, it, it's the height of irony for, for Kevin Rudd to be accusing the opposition of uh, wanting to introduce a big new uh, tax. Um, the ETS, it's a massive new tax. This is, is going to add uh, $1,100 a year uh, to the household budget of every family in Australia. Uh, the Labor but Party the, are the, 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 they the, are the originators that is... of this new tax. And, uh, and for, for Kevin Rudd to, to say, oh, no, no, we're, we're not for a big tax. Well, the government the says it's about $600 and that most people are going to be compensated. <laughs> that's, that's their... That, that's their argument in Penny Wong's case. Well, we'll let them prove it. Let them let them demonstrate it. I mean, the I mean, the, oh, the the legislation says that the cost is so much. Therefore, that's true. I mean, they, they haven't fully released the modelling. They haven't released the Morgan Stanley work. Uh, they're not being clean with the Australian public, they need to be. I mean, we've got to remember, what this government is talking about is a new tax that is not only going to penalise every household in Australia, but it's also going to be a major impost on business. It's going to affect the competitiveness and viability of Australian businesses uh, and for negligible uh, environmental gain and at a time where the rest of the world hasn't agreed to sign up to anything. That's if it ever gets through, and it hasn't got through, Mark, and it's a, such a big issue for Labor.